which highlights how the fringe works um, and how important the box office is. Because there are some festivals who, when they open their doors, there's no risk. It's all covered by either government money or sponsorship. This is not the case of the Adelaide Fringe. The Adelaide Fringe participants must make box office in order to cover their costs. And that $25 million that we made in the box office is covering the costs of 1,000, 6,000 artists, 1,000 show, 1,200 shows, over 500 venues. Um, some people in the fringe break even and some people don't. It is a very delicate ecosystem. We are a $33 million ecosystem approximately. Um, yes, we get $4 million of that from the state government, but we have the rest of it is raised through sponsorship, ticket sales, and that $25 million of box office um, there are myths that most of the box office leaves the state. That is absolutely untrue. The majority of that box office stays right here in South Australia. Most shows who are doing um, a whole season, if there's 20, even if they are an interstate or overseas show, they're spending almost all of their box office on hotels, living, eating, being here in Adelaide. Very, very small percentage of the box office leaves the state. And so that, is, mate, that does contribute to the economic impact of the fringe. And I, I would like to um, highlight that in that delicate ecosystem of the fringe, the box office is covering the costs of what it is to build a venue, to have artists on the stage, to do the marketing and so on, which is why it really is so important and I hope that it will be remembered when the discussion comes up later about uh, park fees because um, increases in anything are going to be very disruptive to this very delicately balanced ecosystem and the tickets are what is covering everything. So what we don't want to see is ticket prices going up in a cost of living crisis. So we want to try and keep the tickets affordable, keep the fringe accessible and inclusive and so where possible we don't want costs to go up too much and we know that um, power is going up by about 30% for a lot of the venues next year. Um, fencing, we already know the quotes for fencing are in incredibly increased. Wages, um, hiring toilets, all those things are going up in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. So please do remember those things when uh, considering what it would be a fair, what would be fair to charge. Um, and also obviously fringe venues are free to go in. You have to buy a ticket to go into the tent to see a show, but you can still enjoy the atmosphere of the fringe. And we had 4.5 million attendances and a million tickets sold. So that shows you that most people are going out to fringe maybe four times in the in the month they might go to one ticket show and three other times they're coming out they're not buying a ticket they're just soaking up atmosphere of fringe and that's all adding to the vibrancy that we are creating we also attracted 45,000 tourists this year it's something that we've worked really hard on in the last few years is getting more tourists or well, the last eight years is getting more tourists because we know that that's how we can lift the economic impact and in when I first started at fringe the average spend, this is my last point, the average Is that okay? Um, the, 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 when I first started at Fringe, the average spend per tourist was $600, and this year the average spend was $3,420. So the, network, the, the people coming to Fringe are staying longer and they're spending more money. And so whatever we can do to protect and look after this amazing ecosystem, we are the biggest arts festival in Australia. There's very few festivals like this in the world. There's Edinburgh, there's Avignon, and there's Adelaide. There's no other the open access festivals that truly take over a town, truly take over a city. And, uh, you know, all of us uh, need to protect this fun jewel in the crown that we have. So thank you for giving me the time. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next deputation is from Mr Nick Mercer, who will be speaking about Light Square events. Nick, would you come forward to the... Um, thank you. Um, we have five minutes now for you to address us. Thank you. Not a problem, Lord Mayor, and, and thank you very much for the invitation and opportunity to be here. Uh, Lord Mayor, councillors, my name is Nick Mercer. I'm the Chief Executive of Light Adelaide. 
I'm also a committee member of the West End Association. I'm joined here by the president of the West End Association, uh, Taryn Hocking, uh, and Justina Jockham, a stalwart of the festivals industry, along with Heather. Um, I'm here today uh, to talk about the draft budget that was outlined. Uh, and the need for an upgrade to event infrastructure into Light Square to help grow the, the Adelaide economy. Um, I'm also uh, here representing quite a few organisations who've sent through their apologies. Um, Lee Cumberledge from uh, Illuminate Adelaide, which opens next week, sent through his apology. Lisa Bishop from uh, The Mercury, who's got an event on tonight, sends her apology. Nikki Harndorf from um, the, the Jam Factory sends through her apology and support. Uh, Justina Jockham has actually provided a letter, a further letter of support. Um, the Adelaide International Comedy Festival has provided a second letter of support. Curtis Moore from Sofitel sends through his apology and says, as a relatively new hotel in Adelaide, it is vital that the immediate vicinity around the hotel offers vibrancy in food, entertainment and culture. Guests who choose to stay at our luxury property expect nothing less than the exciting nightlife, memorable experiences and a sense of something different, something exclusive. They cannot receive, which they cannot receive at, in, uh, at other destinations. This is exactly what a significant upgrade to the Light Square would achieve. By supporting and investing in initiatives such as the Light Square update, Upgrade, you are also supporting our community and overarching economic benefit forecasts into the future. Sofitel Adelaide captures many luxury travellers who would prefer to be entertained on the west end of the city. Uh, Christine from Music SA sends through her apology, as well as saying that uh, her organisation is very supportive of better facilities and power infrastructure into Light Square in this financial year. Tony Scrivener from the Hotel Grand Chancellor uh, passes on his apologies um, and confirms that an in infrastructure into Light Square is imperative for the success of West End. Um, Nathan Hocking, the uh, director of the Adelaide International Comedy Festival, uh, says, we sincerely hope that the Adelaide International Comedy Festival, scheduled for its inaugural debut from the 22nd to the 26th of November in 2023, will be among the first major festivals to establish itself in the West End in many years. Light Square serving as a capital, a central hub connecting key festival venues such as the Queen's Theatre, Light Adelaide and the Mercury will play a vital role for this endeavour. I've spent, a, I've spent a considerable amount of time reading out the uh, support that this proposal has because I want to impart to the councillors uh, that this is more than just Light Adelaide that are trying to impress upon the need and urgency for an upgrade into Light Square. Um, after conversations with a very supportive administration, we understand that uh, it would take a preliminary budget of about $400,000 to immediately put in uh, an upgrade to the electrical distribution board into Light Square, which would allow for activations to occur. To date, we as an organisation try to support as many uh, activations in that space. Right now, uh, Unseen is in there. Uh, and we're providing a hospitality offering to the general public, which unfortunately we have to do serving beverages out of eskies because there's no electricity that we can utilise. Um, I've also had conversations with uh, Illuminate, Illuminate Adelaide, uh, Adelaide Festival and a number of other event organisations who want to host events into that space. And the Lord Mayor's office has received at least half a dozen letters of support for this proposal, but unfortunately can't because the event infrastructure isn't there. So uh, whilst we welcome the master plan's budget line item of $75,000 into Light Square, we'd really impress upon the council that it's uh, critical to upgrade the event infrastructure and in particular the electrical distribution board. Um, and we'd uh, impress upon the urgency of this, which is needed to be funded and delivered within the same financial year. Um, not, acute, not outstanding to the fact that there is an overarching need for additional sewer upgrades, event pits, uh, which we recognise is going to take time. And, uh, and again, we welcome the master plan. So thank you very much for your time. Appreciate your consideration and good luck with your deliberations. Thank you very much, Mr. Mercer, for your information. Thank you. Um, and now could I ask Mr. Simon Roger to come forward? Simon is a member of the Audit and Risk Committee, but is making a deputation regarding support for 21 West. Please, five minutes. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I might beg an extra minute during 
Um, from Axara, we're a 40-year-old tenant, or great, more than 40-year-old tenant of Park 21 West, an inclusive association of clubs and schools that shares fields and facilities with dozens of other clubs and thousands of other users in the parklands. I want to just describe what real community is um, by just quoting a, a small cross-section of users of, of, of Park 21 West. The first is Tim Davis from the Flying Disc Association, not even associated with um, Axara, uh, but we've partnered with uh, this Frisbee organisation for over 20 years. And he says, unlike other parklands tenants, Axara have always been open to sharing playing fields and facilities. However, the facilities are impediment to our stability and growth. It's harder to recruit and retain juniors. We lose players as they get older, especially women, as the facilities cannot support young families and babies. There is a limited ability to hang out after a game, chat with teammates, opposition and watch others. Another quote from Dave Jules and Millie Henty smith who are a family from regional SA who send their kids up to town to, to study. And their perspective is of just a, one of the clubs of Axara. This club has been an integral part of our lives, especially since the tragic passing of our son during pre-season training in 2020. They opened its arms to us as a family and we dealt as we dealt with Josh's death. This included various tributes and awards that still continue. It is a unique family-oriented club which our family will owe a debt to for years to come and it deserves so much more than it currently has. In 2023, when the loss of community is evident across the city, these guys are a shining light of an organisation changing the narrative. Another quote from Joe Duffield, who's joined us here Duff, in, the, in the chair behind me. Duff, I became a, a C4 quadriplegic in 2005 at age 18, then moved to Adelaide in 2014 from a small farming community in the mid-north. The club welcomed me as a person, gave me a new family, and gave me a chance at coaching. I'm currently the only coach in South Australia and one of only two in the country that is coaching in a wheelchair. Not many places will take a chance to look past the person's chair. This club did do that, however, the facilities are atrocious, not wheelchair friendly, and it's very disappointing that the council can't help. James Carrigal, young 12-year-old local resident just down the road, um, he plays junior cricket, he plays junior footy, his brother does the same, his father plays senior cricket and his mother has been our child safe officer for several years. They are all local residents, do nothing about Axara until they, they uh, located nearby. Sturt Street Primary School and now Botanic High School they attend. Neither of these schools were able to provide the sporting and community outlet that they needed. And James's quote is that the community is extremely friendly and anyone can play. They'll accept anyone, including my friend Daniel, who also goes to Botanic and who only joined because no other club would accept him. And finally, a quote from Mick Emmett, who's also here today. He's been involved with Axara for many years. He oversees currently the Adelaide Junior Bulldogs, which is junior footy uh, and cricket. He has a wife who plays netball and daughters that play netball and football. I've been involved since 1993. The facilities were barely adequate even back then for various sports that were played. Since then, netball has been introduced with over 100 women participating each year, and they share two toilets and no showers, and another 150 children and parents from junior football and junior cricket codes yet the facilities are unchanged. They are a barrier to new participants, especially many who are new to the country and to sport. They don't support a healthy, vibrant community, nor provide a safe space to meet. I've got 90 seconds left. I just want to talk briefly about the opportunity itself and the timeline. Uh, in 2017, which is seven to eight years ago, the, this council, the council actually instigated and Axara won a competitive expression of interest, seeking a partner to redevelop Park 21 West. There was subsequent community, extensive community consultation, which endorsed a master plan for the precinct. A community land management plan was then uh, developed and approved by council, uh, including a preliminary building concept design, and that was in 2020. A facility has now been designed in conjunction with council administration. Exara have invested over $100,000 of money already, and this design complies with the community land management plan. It complies with existing council guidelines for building in the parklands, and it complies with a five green star rating. There is broad community support. A petition supported by over 800 people was presumably tabled here earlier in, uh, this year. Uh, and similarly in the, bu the budget, the public consultation process, the overwhelming majority of feedback um, was to, for this project and supported it. Axara has got $3 million ready to invest in this facility, and this facility will be owned by the council. Um, it, the facility, though, has potential to be open for a wide, very wide community use, maybe even be seen as a local hub, including with the Netball Association across the road, the uh, S. Salkner, they're called. I only spoke with their president yet again today, and we're working together about how we can uh, do things in a more community fashion um, across Goody Road. 
So I, I hope, and I don't have time, but I would welcome the opportunity. Um, can I just ask for leave to speak for another two minutes? Moved by Councillor Seventrit, seconded by Councillor Noon. All those in favour? Thank you, Thank you everyone. Um, very, very briefly left anyway. I don't have time, and I would welcome the opportunity, though, uh, to explain the difference between a community facility that we're looking for and a commercial function business which we're not looking for. Um, I challenge and hope this, this council can govern and make decisions for the broad community, many of whom I just quoted tonight. Uh, and I know that there are many of you in this chamber that actually you understand and agree. Uh, we are very motivated, myself personally and XR more broadly, to work with all of you, um, and that's all of you, um, in coming weeks to, to make it happen. Thank you very Thank much, you. Simon. Uh, the next part of the agenda is a petition uh, which we've received from the proponents um, of Park 27B wishing to receive extra, uh, investment in lighting. Uh, the petition contains 210 signatures and is distributed separately. Would someone move receipt, please? Councillor Giles, seconded by Councillor Siebentritt. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, members. Um, we're now moving on to the substantive part of the agenda, which are the reports from committees. Um, item 9.1 is only for noting. For those of you who um, have got into the detail, um, we'll be actually then moving a decision on part of this agenda later on in item 9.3, part 4. Uh, but could I ask someone to move as recommended for 9.1, which is that notes the audit and risk committee um, met and notes the advice. Moved by Councillor Lee, seconded by Councillor Elliott. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, members. Um, we're now moving to 9.2, which is um, in, uh, not in confidence. We're going to, I'm going to ask the CEO who has declared a conflict to leave the room. Um, this is the finalisation of the CEO's um, performance KPIs um, to be assessed in key, key result areas um, at the um, next performance review panel meeting, which um, will be progressed if the council um, endorses them. Um, if the council wishes to speak to the CEO about the details, we'll have to seek her permission to return to discuss any changes with her. Um, but otherwise, could I ask if anybody is able to move by the Deputy Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Elliott. So um, would you like to discuss these matters, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor? No? Is there any debate on them? Are they endorsed? If so, I'll ask all those in favour. All those against, that's carried unanimously. Thank you. I think we could ask the CEO to return to the room. Thank you. Um, the next item is 9.3, which is the recommendations of the usual City Finance and Governance Committee meeting on the 20th of June. It has four elements, um, which we may need to take in parts, and I understand some members have conflicts of interest, um, which we will note. Um, at, so I will take them each one separately. The first item is recommendation one, which is item 5.1 on the committee agenda, is just noting the consultation and the submissions that were received. So could I ask if someone would move that? Deputy Lord Mayor moved, seconded by Councillor Elliott. All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you, members. Um, the next item is the Adelaide Aquatic Centre development. Um, since the last um, discussion by Council. We've had a Catatilla meeting and they have some recommendations that you may wish to incorporate in the primary advice from Council. If we could scroll by. Um, the Parklands Authority met in some detail and went through the plans um, and if you note their, their recommendations are lower down. Could you scroll down? Thank you. 
Um, and they, the key issues were a reduction in the hard stand, concern about the loss of trees, um, some design issues, a commitment by a DIT to a net increase in tree canopy were parts of their recommendations. Um, are you happy to move that, Deputy Lord Mayor? Uh, look, uh, Lord Mayor, I'm happy to move uh, uh, an amended motion to incorporate the recommendations Thank you. Uh, of uh, uh, Cadlatilla, but I would also like to move uh, a small addition at 2.8, if I may. Thank you. Um, so that would be four, would it? 2.4? Uh, no. Oh, 2.8. 2.8. Okay. And, uh, the, and I apologise uh, for not uh, having circulated this, but I, I don't anticipate there'll be any objection. Um, it is the development of a traffic management investigation and plan for neighbouring streets. And I don't need to specify those, do I, Lord Mayor? No. I think that will be apparent to the administration. I think, I think that will be a process through SCAP as well. I, I'm certain, uh, but my certainty will be guaranteed if I, uh, if I move it specifically. So could I just seek clarification? I'm not quite sure about the way those one, two and three have been incorporated in the number system. Um, elements uh, above about the Parklands Building Design Guidelines have been um, incorporated into the wording. Can you just uh, confirm that we've got the numbers correct? It should not be, should it not be? 2.9, 10, 2.11? Am I? Three, four, just, five. Can you just assist me? Yes, I can, Lord Mayor. I, I don't believe that that will follow from. Can um, you just scroll up and see where it starts? Yes, I, I have read that. Oh, sorry. M may I suggest that after 2.8, which is not yet complete and includes management plan for neighbouring streets, that we add. Um, to the end of neighbouring streets, a comma, the word and, accepts the recommendations of Cadlatilla as follows. Semicolon. Yes, I think that is. Can I just seek advice? Could you just allow me a moment? Actually, the two points are at the end of the stuff before it gets to Capitilla, so we just need to move that two point. <coughs> I'm sorry, you've lost me. I, I'm not quite sure what you're trying to tell me. Um, at the top of the screen, when Barbara moves up, there's another 2.7, and okay. that's where that needs to go, because then that will lead into the Catatilla advice. Um, I've been advised that we should cut and paste this in another order. There's another 2.7, apparently. I'm not quite sure what we're... Will you just allow me a moment to make sure this is tidy? Do you know what they're doing? Oh, I see. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not convinced that we have this in an orderly manner. Well, I don't think he can see it all on the screen. I can't see it all on the screen. You need to go back, no, you need to you go need back, to go back up to the top yeah. just to make sure the root of the motion is correct. Whoops, no. Oh. Here we are. Yeah. So, so I scroll down. One, two. No, it didn't. So, so the, the 
all that came from something other than menstruation. Into capitalism? No, into this. Yes. <clears throat> Can I assist Lord Mayor? Um, we don't require the changes proposed line. No, I'm, I think that this um, motion has been amended by in multiple ways. It, um, it has, but it, I think it will still work. Uh, I apologise, this is um, suboptimal. Is that a question? Would you like to speak to it while we're editing? Look, I mean, members and members, this is the Capital City Council, right? So we know when we're going to meet. We meet on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. And too often, I think that we get these types of amendments at the last moment. In future, these types of amendments should be in our agenda, open to the public. And Adelaide City Council should be an exemplar for the other 68 councils in South Australia. And we should have time as a council to consider this, and our community should have time to consider this in our agenda. I would the also like to order, speak to the 20... Is, excuse me. As a point of order, it is in the agenda. You obviously hadn't With read it. With these changes? Yes. Then why are we doing it now? Because I'm just pretty sure the word menstruation. Why are they all in red? There are amendments, right? amendments. Yeah, they, they are they're... in the agenda. Okay. I feel like too often we get this, and like we've had this before. We've actually had an advice paper on the night of the meeting come to this council suggesting that we make other amendments. I can't see why Catalyt Hiller can't be moved to an off week, so actually give time for this to be put forward. Furthermore, I'm extremely critical of this council in the way that we've adopted and um, agreed to pay for $20 million. Now, this council under the Local Government Act and the principles of local government is responsible for making informed decision. This council does not know what impact a $20 million build will have on our long-term financial plan in terms of the future increases to our ratepayers, in terms of the interest we're going to pay. I have heard the Lord Mayor, for example, on radio saying this is going to save us a million dollars, but it's going to cost us a million dollars in interest. So these types of things, and it also uh, eats into our prudential borrowing limit and what this city can do as a council. Now this council has told our community that we're spending $140 million on street upgrades and infrastructure projects, and I can't see how we're going to be able to deliver that in the context of this $20 million spend. And I don't think that this council is acting in a responsible manner, given that this hasn't been done in line and in consideration with our long-term financial plan. I think that this is a good deal for the city of Adelaide. So the $120 million infrastructure project for the cost, I suppose, of two Adelaide City residents of $20 million seems fair. But I absolutely am extremely frustrated by the lack of information, the rushed approach to this, and we're still making amendments at the last hour uh, in a council meeting. And I don't think that this is how we should be doing business in future. Thank you. Um, Councillor Thank you, Lord Mayor. And um, I disagree with the first part of, of uh, my fellow councillors' points. I, I think this has been in the agenda in, red, uh, in writing for um, quite some time from Calatilla, but I will actually uh, agree with his point, um, this was the second part of his point, and uh, I'm extremely uncomfortable with giving the state government uh, carte blanche $20 million um, to build in our parkland. I know we have no choice in the matter, uh, at least in regards to the building of it, not in regards to the $20 million. Um, I will support, uh, I, I would ask that it is taken in part, I will support part one and I think what is now three, four and five, but I will not support, support substantive part two because I, I just don't believe we should be building on our parkland. We have the Parklands Management Strategy and the Parklands Building Design Guidelines. 
Um, it predicates the years in which the funding will go. Um, we've locked in the 70 metres. The traffic management plan and we have incorporated the advice and the advice is recommends consideration reduction in hard stand, the potential loss of trees and the net increase in tree canopy. I think we've got, got it correctly formatted now. Thank you. In that case, um, can I take it in parts? Which was the part you didn't want to support, Councillor Snape? Part, part two, so part one, three, four, and five on the line. Okay, so could we move part one, three, four, and five together, Count, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor? Uh, yes, I Thank you, seconded. One, three, four, and five. Councillor Snape, all those in favour? That's carried unanimously. We'll go back to part two. Moved by Councillor Giles, seconded by Councillor Siebentritt. All those in favour? That's carried, thank you. All those against, against with one, thank you, two. Division. Can I, the division has been called. Members, a division have been called. Please stand in favour of the division until your name has been called. <laughs> Councillor Noon, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Ho, Councillor Siebentrup, Councillor Giles, Deputy Lord Mayor Councillor Martin and Councillor Abraham today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that, that is carried. I now move on to uh, recommendation three, which is the events and festivals sponsorship, moved by Deputy Lord Mayor. Oh, not moved by Deputy Lord Mayor. No, no Lord Mayor. Um, I wish to declare a conflict of interest, a material conflict of interest. I am a member of the Adelaide Festival Centre Trust, uh, which is the recipient of some of the proposed funding, and therefore I will leave the room until the matter is dealt with. Thank you. Um, please fill out the form, as you record. You've done it already. Thank you, um, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor is withdrawing his chair and leaving the room. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Siebentritt, seconded by Councillor Abraham today. Um, unless there's any discussion, all those in favour? That's carried unanimously, thank you. Um, now, could, can we ask the Deputy Lord Mayor to return? Um, recommendation four, I think Councillor Abraham today has a conflict. He will withdraw his chair and leave the room. I, I do. I'll just state that it is a material conflict of interest as my wife works for KPMG and I've got the form in my hot little hands. Lord Thank Mayor. you very much indeed. Deputy Lord Mayor is returning. Councillor Abraham today is leaving. Can I ask that someone move um, the internal audit plan? Councillor Lee, seconded by Councillor Giles. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, members. Could we have Councillor Abraham Zadeh back, please? I'm now going to ask um, Councillor Elliott, I think, to move the recommendations of his committee. Um, he chaired Infrastructure and Public Works Committee, item 9.4. Sorry, are you asking me to move that? Lord Would you Mayor? like to move it? Yes, happy to move that. Um, and I'll note that the, um, each item on the agenda had unanimous support from all members, so I'm happy to move those uh, on block. Thank you. Seconded by, by Councillor Snape. All those in favour? Oh, yes, Thank if you must. <laughs> please. I just, I, no, I just want to speak sp uh, specifically in regards to um, Hamilton Place. Yes, please and I, do. And I want to thank um, the elected members that uh, came down to Hamilton Place uh, with me to meet um, residents. And we note, um, although there is some disappointment around um, the fact that we're not doing uh, the one way, the goal was ultimately always about road safety, not strictly about a one way. And the, um, the proposals put forward by administration in regards to greening and uh, a bit of sh uh, street management, uh, I believe satisfy um, the conditions for improved traffic safety in that location. So I'd like to thank the administration for their work uh, in that as well. And I, um, I hope that the majority of residents on Hamilton Place um, 
uh, you know, look forward to the upgrades and the uh, calmer traffic measures going forward. Thank you. Um, thank you for your advocacy. Uh, Councillor Davis? Yeah, I just wanted to say um, that I want to congratulate Councillor Snape on his advocacy for the residents. Um, he's played a, a, put a huge amount of effort uh, into that particular project, and I think that uh, he's acted uh, in an exemplar way um, and a standard well beyond, I think, what uh, a normal councillor would put in. So I just want to congratulate him personally on that, on that effort that he's put in. Unless there's a contrary view, I'll put that all those in favour. That's carried. Thank you, members. Um, now we're on to item 10.1, which is our business plan and budget for 23-24. Um, I need to just inform you, uh, just to make sure we're all aware, that there's a general exemption from conflict of interest in this plan um, unless someone pulls out one of the subsidiaries in item 14, 15 or 16. So. Can I have someone to move it as is printed? Moved by Councillor Siebentritt, seconded by Councillor Elliott. Are there any... Um, Councillor Abraham today? Lord Mayor, I do have a, an amendment that I did send through uh, earlier this evening, and I did send that through to the Council recommendations inbox, so um, I'm hoping the... Thank you. The um, can we just pull it up on the screen? Have, you, have we got a number, point eight? It is point eight, and I am adding two points um, under point A. So there's point eight and eight uh, A and eight B. Can I just seek clarification? Is this the right place? Please, Mr. Sedgman, are we in the right? I just want to be sure that I've got it correct, please. Uh, through the presiding member, uh, technically uh, it's not correct because uh, the proposed amendment is in relation to fees and charges, which are dealt with under Section 188 of the Local Government Act. It would need to be. Uh, Can we just have a look? Uh, need to be a new 10, Lord Mayor. Can you just give me a If the motion was successful, yes. So can I just ask you, I just I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I've got this correct before we vote on it, Councillor. I, I specifically broke it down into two sections just so it's easier for both the members and administration to understand and, and okay. act on it. Okay, all right. Are we happy with that? Are we on top of this? Yep. Uh, have you got a seconder? C Councillor Ho. Lord Mayor, before um, I speak to the motion, um, may I, given that it has, uh, this amendment does have some uh, implications um, for, um, for members who may not necessarily uh, be across um, what this might do to the budget, I'm happy to uh, allow administration to um, provide us a bit of an explanation on how this might um, this might affect the budget. Yes, please. Edgman, could you um, assess this for us, please? Uh, the likely dollar impact. And thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, so the total dollar impact for the proposed budget for 23-24 would be in the order of $908,000, so $0.9 million. Um, the Is that per year? Uh, no, that's the initial year. Okay. Uh, which represents a 75% discount. In the second year, which re effectively represents a 50% discount, it would be in the order of $700,000. Uh, in 25-26, it would be in the order of $500,000. 
that's 1.2, 2.1 million over three years. Thank you very much. Is that okay, Councillor? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Yes, yes it is. Um, Lord Mayor, there is a reason why I have brought this, uh, this amendment along to this chamber, and that is that when, um, when I walk the streets and when I speak to traders, they are still talking to me about uh, recovering from uh, the impacts of uh, COVID-19. Um, they're also speaking to me about the uh, amount of foot traffic uh, that we have uh, in our city. And as we know, working from home has become uh, uh, somewhat normal. Um, if uh, if, if um, uh, certain employees don't um, work from home uh, most of the time, they definitely do work from home some of the time. So the foot traffic that we used to have uh, in our Adelaide CBD is no longer there. And um, uh, some of the traders that I have been speaking to, particularly um, traders where, um, uh, uh, who are located in, in um, certain precincts that heavily rely on office workers, um, and, I'm, and I'm happy to, to share where, uh, where some of that feedback is coming from. Um, North Terrace, Hindley Street, uh, Bank Street, Lee Street, all of the, uh, uh, um, the, the small laneways that have uh, uh, hospitality venues. Uh, and, and I'm sure uh, uh, that's, that's, they're not the only precincts that, uh, that have those issues. You come through to Portney Street, Hutt Street, uh, um, Guja Street, Groat Street, um, some of those traders still have the same sort of uh, same sort of issues that they're facing. So uh, the reason why I have brought this amendment in this format is to uh, a give some of these traders a bit of a heads up that uh, uh, we are working towards normality and that by the end of this term we will go back to that normality and uh, uh, we'll be uh, looking at reintroducing um, our uh, outdoor dining fees uh, in a staggered manner. Uh, um, but also, Lord Mayor, um, these businesses are our, um, are our stakeholders. So if we want them to survive and thrive, then we should be working in partnership with them. Uh, and that partnership doesn't mean that we need to go back and slap them with 100% uh, of, the, of the fees, reintroduce those fees at a, at a rate of 100%. We should be working with them. We should be working with uh, uh, the industries, industry bodies uh, that represent those businesses, uh, and um, uh, and and have a uh, have an approach that ensures that businesses do have a heads up um, uh, about these fees, uh, and also uh, the uh, the impact on them is uh, is a bit more eased. That's the uh, uh, that's the first component of the of the amendment, Lord Mayor. And the second component. Um, as we heard earlier this evening, but also um, as um, the correspondence that's been coming through over the past few weeks, there is a, a focus and a will of, uh, of a number of uh, businesses, individuals and stakeholders in our West End who want to uh, upgrade Light Square, who want to um, uh, activate it, who want to bring life into that part of the city. And as a former resident of the, uh, uh, of the Western part of the CBD, I completely uh, understand um, uh, where they're coming from and why they're doing this. Um, uh, for those members that may not necessarily uh, uh, be familiar with, uh, with Light Square, I, I do ask for another minute if I could please, Lord yeah, Mayor. Thank you, Councillors. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, for, uh, for members that may not necessarily be uh, familiar with that part of the, uh, part of the city, um, there's a, uh, um, there's a, there's a small uh, residential population, but uh, uh, if we really want to um, uh, make an impact and essentially replicate what happens in the East End during fringe, uh, we really need to uh, invest in that part of the city. And so I hope that uh, uh, members can see that um, uh, uh, this is an investment uh, and, um, uh, and, and I'm hopeful uh, and I know that um, uh, once the works are done, we will see the return on that investment and we'll be celebrating what the West End uh, will achieve in the same way that the East End achieves during Fringe. I totally uh, support this amendment. Um, I too have been speaking to a lot of the traders in various areas. Um, I would actually prefer not to actually increase um, at all 
the outdoor dining fee in the first year, but this could be a compromise. So um, I think that this is, is looking much better than actually just applying a full 100% uh, increase, um, even if it commences on the 1st of October. Um, I am a resident of West End and have been for a little while. I was also previously a, West, a resident of East End. So at the end of the day, I feel that West End is actually the poor cousin. And I think I'm very much supportive of this. I actually, oh, my uh, dining area overlooks the West End area and I just think that it is crying out for activity. And I know that there's lots of development and lots of people looking at the West End for you know, business, residential. So I think for us to invest this now is critical. I'm 100% supportive of these two amendments and I congratulate you, Councillor Apera Himsaday, for putting it forward. Um, can I just clarify, just for um, members, this would still be starting on the 1st of October? This is not altering the start date? That's, that's right, Lord Mayor. Yep. Okay. Um, and can I just ask, we had some other amendments that would be maybe not reflected in this, but the parklands fees. We might need to discuss those other amendments. Councillor Siebentritt, we'll Mayor, deal with this one first. I, I did have a procedural question, which was there were some recommendations coming out of the Special Finance and Governance Committee meeting held earlier today. I'm mm. just wanting, seeking clarification as to whether the intention is to deal with this new Part 10 first, and then we deal with what's a new, I understand, proposed Part 18. Can I clarify yes. that? Thank you. Um, the councillor, through no fault of his own, was unable to attend earlier, so he wasn't there. So he's not aware of the discussion that occurred, and I think Councillor Lee wasn't, was not in attendance either. Um, I think that he has moved this motion. Um, it would be fair for him to know what the motion was in relation to Parkland's fees, which is the only element that crosses over here. Can we just make sure he, everybody understands the discussions that have been had. There we are. Um, there was a discussion about the fee going down from 68.50 to $60 per, hundred, per thousand square metres per day and to have a report. Um, I think the report would not be in opposition to your, your amendment, uh, but I think that the Part one would be. So I would remind members that they have two choices before them or another one should they choose, but um, I think it would be respectful to allow Councillor Abraham today's motion to be decided upon first. Count, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, I, I thank uh, Councillor Abraham today. Um, for his amendment. Um, uh, I will not be able to support that for reasons um, which I've spoken of before. Uh, the outdoor dining fees uh, imposed by council um, have been imposed for many, many years and until 2016 every new business opening in the city um, paid a fee uh, for tables in the public realm. That was suspended in 2016 to encourage uh, new businesses to uh, 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 utilise outdoor dining in the city. In 2019, uh, we suspended them uh, for what was to be a year or two to encourage more outdoor dining. However, in 2020, COVID came along and it became very difficult for uh, hospitality businesses in the city to trade because of the restrictions on indoor dining and the number of people who were able to gather in one place indoors. And it was therefore decided by council that it would be a reasonable thing to do to suspend all outdoor dining fees while the pandemic was raging to support our businesses. Uh, and uh, we did so um, at a cost, as we've heard tonight, um, uh, in. Uh, in the region of two to three million dollars. Um, it was, I thought, the right thing for this council to do. Um, COVID has passed. 
uh, restaurants are no longer restricted in the number of people that they can host at any particular time. And uh, things are returning pretty much to normal, except the public realm uh, for which there has always been a charge uh, is still being used at no cost to hospitality businesses. Now, after nearly eight years of um, many businesses enjoying free outdoor dining permits uh, and the majority of businesses enjoying no outdoor dining fees for the past four years, we as the council are in budget repair. We have, uh, as other businesses do, skyrocketing costs. And just as hospitality is increasing the cost of its services, I know my local cafe is now charging me almost $6 for a cup of coffee, um, we need to uh, levy these charges as a means of repairing our budget, which was damaged dreadfully during the period of COVID. Um, the hit to our budget, as the administration has described, is almost $2 million. Uh, $2 million would do a great deal to assist business in this city in other ways. Um, I do urge members to not support this. Uh, the impact on our budget is extreme. And in respect of the, uh, the second amendment, uh, in regard to the upgrades to uh, electrical infrastructure in Light Square, this I support. Uh, however, um, I, I believe that it is premature for us to be allocating money for, may I have a, a minute longer, Lord Mayor? Thank you. Um, while I agree that uh, this is a worthwhile project, I note that the Council has already allocated in the current financial year a budget of $80,000 to create a master plan for Light Square. Y yes, yes, to be precise, 75000 75, sorry. $75,000 um, to create a master plan for Light Square. That includes not only electrical infrastructure, but sewage to enable uh, toilets to be provided during events, to provide water so that those providing food and other services have water, and also for event pits which were described during the deputation tonight. Now, in order to provide those services, we need to know where each of them are going. That is to say, there is no point in digging up Light Square for power cabling if you're about to dig it up again or cross it with sewage pipes, water pipes and other infrastructure. It is important that we get it right, that we dig it up once and we do it properly. And I suspect that uh, in the 24-25 budget, uh, if Councillor Abraham today doesn't, I'll be proposing that we invest heavily in that uh, upgrade to Light Square. But the appropriate fashion in which to, to proceed is to do the master plan, know where the infrastructure is going, send it out to tender and to complete those works. A and therefore, I would ask members to take that more considered and responsible approach rather than simply allocating money, not knowing how it's all going to end up. Thank you. Councillor Ho, did you wish to speak? Did you second this? Yes, yeah, well, may I keep it brief? Uh, look, I mean, two months ago when I first talked about, talk about this issue with you as well as the CEO, I did mention that the ratepayers in my area are actually happy to pay for outdoor dining. All right? They understand the responsibilities in, in terms of like, I mean, how, how we actually work together. And my original position in terms of the parkland fees, I always believe that if you use the parkland, you have to pay for it, right? I mean, because it costs us a fortune to maintain, maintain the parkland. But looking at all the debates and looking at all the emails we receive and information we gather together, I think it's the time for us to share the love and share the pain. The council certainly have a budget to be fixed, but we are not expecting to fix our budget like this. Right? We can do it over the next couple of years. And at the same time, our ratepayers as well as the event organizers in the parklands can take time to kind of restructure their business and understand the fees and charges are coming. They can actually work on their budgets bit by bit, year after year. So I think 
Councillor Abrahinsada has moved a very sensible motion on this matter, and I urge members to support it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm not going to be supporting this amendment um, because whenever we have these discussions about sharing the pain and the burden on business, we forget that the, that, um, the people who do not get the funds if we don't re, re, um, uh, rebuild our budget are the people who live in the city who've been putting up with uh, lack of maintenance in our city, lack of community services, for many, many years. I mean, COVID didn't just hit business, COVID hit all the people that live in the city as well in, and the residences because what they've had to put up with is, is a, a city that they are now becoming a little embarrassed about. So it's really important that we rebuild the budget. That's an absolutely crucial thing. When Heather Crowell spoke about the, the impact of costs on the fringe, she talked about power and um, fencing and wages and toilets. Council has those costs as well. They're not just for people that use the parklands. We have those costs as well. So any further co costs that we incur have to be paid for and they're paid for by the people who live in the city of Adelaide. So I'm not supporting these motions, because, uh, the first amendment, the first part of the amendment because I want us to start refocusing on how we make our city um, a a fabulous place for people to live in um, and I do not believe that reverting back to um, outdoor dining fees will will damage business at a time when I can see by walking around as I live in the city um, that people are out and about and back in restaurants and actually the city is looking pretty good at the moment um, and so business seems to be doing reasonably well and business confidence is up. Um, and the second part of it, um, I totally agree that we need to do something to upgrade Light Square, but I would um, agree with the Deputy Lord Mayor that we need to do it in a cons more considered way. Uh, my position is that I believe the businesses are being uh, double hitted by the increase of car parking fee, which discourages visitation, and also uh, the resurrection of the fees for the outdoor dining, so I will support a gradual returning of fees. Uh, I, I congratulate uh, Councillor Abahimzadeh for representing the business this way. Um, Councillor Siebentritt. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I want to speak briefly in relation to uh, 10 Part A. Uh, thank Councillor Abahimzadeh for bringing this before us and again for highlighting the important issue around the impact on uh, businesses of some of the changes we're making. However, I find that the whole process we've been through has been an attempt to get a balance between um, impacts on one hand and the benefits that businesses will receive on others. And while we may be looking at a, uh, an introduction of outdoor dining fees on one hand, and I do note the Parklands events fees are dealt with as part of a separate motion, we have already, I think, made uh, concessions around additional potential changes elsewhere in the budget through our budget development discussions, for example, around uh, caps around rate changes, um, not increasing parking fees as much as has been discussed. So I think what we see today before us has already considered some of the impacts on, on businesses. And so I'll, I won't be supporting this. I do note the importance of the issue that Council Abraham today has raised, and I believe we have uh, largely addressed that through other considerations made in the budget process. Um, is anyone going... I have a question. If I speak to this, can I speak to the main motion again? Or do I lose my chance? You will have spoken to the amendment. Um, and Can I then? What? Yeah. And so, like for example, is Councillor Stephen Tritt lost his chance to, to move the motion? We're going to have multiple amendments, unfortunately. I suspect. But if I speak to this, do I lose the chance to speak to the main? I think not. Yes, it becomes emotion. So you can. Uh, but there are other amendments which you can speak on. Um, I think that we, Councillor Elliott. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I did have my hand up earlier, but there was a lot of people wanting to speak. Um, it would be inappropriate for me to speak on behalf of a councillor who's not here, but um, 
Councillor Cross unfortunately couldn't make it tonight, and I've had a number of conversations with her through this process. Uh, she's very in touch with the business community, and I greatly admire her engagement with that sector <coughs> of the City of Adelaide. And one thing that stood out to me that um, came out of our conversations was, uh, in her conversations, businesses aren't asking for something for free. And what we're kind of seeing in the City of Adelaide is that the bounce back from COVID is not uniform. While we're seeing business confidence is up, some people are doing really well, some people are doing not so well. It's the same thing with residents. But what we're effectively seeing with a lot of these tri amendments trying to score some minor points with parts of the community is washing over the fact that it is not uniform and we're expected to take the, bolt, the lion's share of the pain. So pain and gain, we're expected to, to foot that and so are the residents, unfortunately. <clears throat> with the um, reintroduction of dining fees, we're talking about tens of dollars for most businesses on a weekly basis. Um, for most business, small and medium-sized businesses, the fees that they would be expected to pay um, from the estimates that were provided by administration was less than $20 per week, which is what most businesses would be able to make back in a single transaction. So we're talking about the cost of a couple of coffees per week to pay for some uh, expanded business operating area, which goes back into contributing to maintenance and upgrades of the public realm. And what we're facing at the moment is an unprecedented, almost, expectation that we are putting a lot of money in a constrained budget environment back into the public realm to reinvigorate the city. There's been quite a number of years now where businesses have had quite a lot of concessions made to them, picked up by the ratepayer as a whole, and now it's time for people to put back into the public coffers so that we can actually deliver on the expectations that people have for us as a public institution charged with the responsibility of spending public money. The businesses, as, ra as ratepayers themselves, do have an obligation to contribute to those funds that we then expend for upgrades of the public realm that they use currently for their businesses for free. Um, so I won't be supporting uh, the proposal at Part A uh, on that basis because I think it's responsible that all ratepayers are contributing to the operations and maintenance of the city and then to the, ex uh, to the upgrades that are expected by all the ratepayers and stakeholders as well. Um, briefly to point B, Lord Mayor, I'll, uh, I was really pleased to hear the deputation and I, I, I share that sentiment. I'm, I'm very, very supportive of, a, of an upgrade to Light Square, but I agree with the comments of the, Lord, of the Deputy Lord Mayor that this does need to be a deliberate effort um, to make a uh, concerted upgrade, not a piece, piecemeal approach. Um, my partner works in construction and the amount of variations that go undocumented when things come up several years down the track May I have leave of the meeting for an extension, Lord Mayor? Thank you, members. Uh, a lot of things go undocumented. It makes it incredibly expensive and unnecessarily complicated the next time round. So I do support uh, the development of a master plan and we will point back to the fact that we don't have any kind of sense of a harmonised not that we necessarily need a uniform expectation of what the, uh, the light square precinct should look like, but we don't have an understanding of what the broader community expects from that space, not just the events um, organisers. So I think it's prudent that we engage in that process before we commit to a funding um, measure in the budget, um, but that also we refer back to other documents such as the city plan, which will come into, a, uh, will be delivered to council next year, and also refer back to other documents such as the 2002 and 2011 uh, Adelaide Public Life and Spaces uh, reports which demonstrate the ways that a lot of those city squares can be upgraded as well and bring those into some kind of a, a harmonised um, narrative about the possibility of potential for light square which would be far more consistent with council's expectations, the community expectations and the expectations of the people looking to use that as an event space. So I know it would be disappointing to hear that as a resident of the West End I do not support part B, um, however I think it's, it's best that we defer that until a budget later in this term and have a better sense of what the uh, the budget implications and planning requirements would be for that upgrade. Thank you, Lord Mayor. So, um, I think it would be appropriate to take 10 minutes to do a uh, So that people have the capacity to vote for different parts of it. Um, Councillor Davis, if you'd like to speak. If, so long as I don't lose I my right. Can I just say one thing more? Um, we have the potential to suspend meeting procedures if people wish to discuss this further. Yeah, thank you. Look, I think that there's some consideration that the outdoor dining fees and these Parklands event fees are worth a cup of coffee. It's worth $2 million. These are massive fees that we charge 
um, our diners and our traders. We're talking about like the connotation or the, the implication that uh, that our ratepayers are subsidising our traders is completely false. Outdoor dining fees are a double taxation on our res on our restaurants. There, the amount of rates that they pay is calculated on the ability for that facility to generate income. If they have outdoor dining fees, their rates are higher. This is just a double taxation on top of it. And if you want to see what the implication and how well traders are doing, have a walk down Rundle Street and have a look at all the vacant properties that have remained vacant for months and months and months. I work on North Terrace and I get a coffee from Brunelli's every single morning. And all those traders, and I went door knocking yesterday and talked to them, they're under significant amount of pressure. There are huge, like, massive businesses like on a regular basis, big businesses, going under, like the stag, because of the fees that we're placing on them. Now, the other thing is with the parklands events. This is, they go hand in hand. The idea that we're trying to activate our parklands to try and re-establish these massive global events, and at the same time giving them a grant and then taxing them for it, is absolutely ludicrous. We should be supporting the recovery of our traders within this city. And I think for council to come here and say it's completely recovered, you have no idea what it's like on the ground. And you have no idea what our businesses are facing. I'm a tax lawyer and I see what they're doing on a regular basis. I see their financials. They're running losses. They're giving personal guarantees to run these, uh, to run restaurants, to support and activate our community. They're telling us through our consultation, through their representative groups, that they're struggling. And they're struggling real hard. And we can see that through the valuation increase. CPI was, what, 7%. Seven, 7%. Seven the increased rent that landlords are charging their tenants to keep them in place leads into our valuations, and that's the 3%. That should be a massive indication to this council that our traders are struggling, that these increased outdoor dining fees and the fees on the parkland, as we've had a deputation tonight, these are not unsubstantial amounts. The alternative proposal is 12% saving. This is a 75% saving. This actually delivers on what the Fringe and Gluttony and other events who are trying to activate our state are asking us for. They need that money to invest back into our community. That community activates our streets. When our restaurants are full, when our Rundle Street, our Rundle Street, our main street in the city basically, is full, doesn't, isn't wrapped with butcher's paper, then we can reintroduce this. But at least what Councillor Abraham today is trying to do is give them a staged recovery uh, in this manner. I think that traders in this city who pay their fair share of rates is worth far more than a cup of coffee, should be felt very Thank left you. down by this council. Thank you, Councillor. Um, are we able to vote on this matter now? Um, would you like to finish can the I debate? Sum up? Please, Please sum Mayor. up. Thank you. And, and Lord Mayor, um, yeah, if we can take it in parts, that would be great. Thank you. Um, just to touch on some of the things that, it, uh, that have been discussed here in the chamber tonight, um, uh, Councillor Elliott did mention something uh, um, that I did forget to mention, and that was um, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the conversations that Councillor Kouros uh, has had with myself, with Councillor Elliott and, and, and other members, and that is that businesses don't want uh, um, their outdoor dining for free. They don't. They don't want a handout, they want a hand up. And so if we do want to work in partnership with them, then it is our duty to, to give them that hand up. Um, and uh, yes, COVID is yesterday's news. Yes, we are getting over COVID, but um, it's the implications that uh, it has brought about, and that is uh, things like working from home being a normal practice now. Uh, and as I said, members, you'll, you'll, uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to invite you to certain pockets of, uh, of the CBD where I walk and talk to the traders, and they'll tell you that uh, um, uh, Ever since, uh, ever since uh, um, COVID recovery, be it uh, you know last year, uh, they're still 30% uh, down on uh, on trade. Uh, so how can we expect them to uh, uh, to foot this bill? How can we expect them to uh, to pay this? And some of the some of the traders that I do speak to, um, you know, they raise a good point, Lord Mayor. They say that um, we're essentially putting this uh, fee. They describe it as a tax, but we we, we essentially put this fee on them for activating our public realm. And, and to be honest, I don't have a response to that. 
because I, I agree with that. Why are we, why are we um, hitting them with a fee when all they're trying to do is bring life back into the city? Um, that's for par, uh, part A, Lord Mayor. For part B, if I can just uh, reiterate some of the facts, and that is that, yes, we do have $75,000 allowed in this budget for a master plan. Um, but what I'm asking for is uh, there is some, some uh, um, electrical infrastructure upgrade that needs to get done there. Uh, the cost just for that component is $400,000. And I'm uh, happy to, uh, um, uh, happy to, uh, uh, to essentially ask administration to stage that if they can so that once you have your master plan and once you have a, a scope of works that you prioritize your electrical infrastructure upgrades first and then you can go along and do everything else. So uh, um, uh, yes, I do work in construction. I understand how, uh, 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 how changing uh, uh, sequences can, uh, um, uh, can sometimes cause uh, complications, but uh, what we can do is have the master plan, have the scope of works, we know exactly what we're trying to do and what we're upgrading prioritizing the electrical infrastructure upgrades uh, would be the thing that I'm asking for in component uh, B here. Uh, and I do ask for your support, members. Voting in favour for the division is Councillor Noon, Councillor Ho, Councillor Lee, Councillor Snape and Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Snape? Sorry. Sorry, Councillor Davis. <laughs> um, I, there's an equality of votes, so I'll vote against that. Members, those in favour, voting in favour for Amendment 10D, Councillor Noon, Councillor Ho, Councillor Siebentrip, Councillor Giles, Councillor Snape, Councillor Davis and Councillor Abraham Zadeh. Thank you. Um, I think now I'll take the next amendment from Councillor Siebentritt, which is um, an, an omnibus collection, I think. Lord Mayor, is it appropriate for me to speak to it in introducing this? Yes, as I'm, we bring I'm just, it up on the screen? I just want to know where to put it. Which I think it, I believe it forms a new 19 we'll now. We've put it at part 18. Um, I think the numbers, we've incorporated 10, so we'll make it 19, I think, now. Is that right? Yes, I believe it's, still it's 18. part 19. I think the numbers I'm have sorry, can I just there. confirm that it's still 18? There's two 11s. I'm sorry, we have to change the numbers so it will become, I think, 19. I'm sorry? Um, because of the... Um, increase in capital expenditure, we'll need to amend another element of this motion to affect, because the borrowings have been um, affected. Um, it's cap capital expenditure um, rather than the 908, which would have been, sorry? Which would have affected the, the um, Three. sorry? Paragraph 13 will have to be amended. This is untidy. Um, 
Um, so you've got a new 10, and it's been renumbered, so it would... Sorry, maybe we'll yeah. just work 14. out how this is fitting in, and then we'll highlight it red so we can see it's a second amendment. So the amendment to the borrowings figure, Lord Mayor, would in, be in para 14, uh, increasing the number to 30.2 million. So we'll, we'll have... Currently we will still have a surplus but there will be increased borrowings. Can we make that red? And then can we scroll down and see where item 19 has landed? Lord Mayor, briefly, is there an amendment at, uh, I think it's now 13, with the, um, the delivery of a surplus? I'm sorry? Is there an amendment now as a result of this for what is now, I think, point 13 for the delivery of a surplus? Um, we ha that's just a, a subsequent change after the first amendment, but I, I'm not sure if we need another amendment after Councillor Siebentritz. I think not, because his are not affecting borrowings. So if we could look at 19, which falls into several parts. Um. Lord Mayor, would you like me to speak to the introduction of the motions that relate to all three themes? But there that were three would be a good idea if you could. Thank you Wonderful. very much. Would you thank like you. to? Um, so thank you, council members. Uh, I speak in relation to the outcomes of a special finance and governance committee meeting held this afternoon that was specifically held in relation to discussing feedback, extensive feedback we've had through the consultation process and the business plan and budget. And I thank all those organisations and individuals who, um, who provided that uh, feedback. Uh, there were three items in particular, or three issues in particular, that uh, received, I suppose, specific attention that we discussed this afternoon. The first in relation to Park 21 West, the second in relation to Parklands fees, and the third in relation to uh, streets. If I speak briefly to those, and I imagine other members will wish to as well. Um, note in relation to Park 21 West, the significant work that that uh, organisation through Exara and also community members involved with that organisation have put into their submissions, as well as a strong advocacy for work in that park. I think my observation across council members is there is a strong interest in community sport, community sporting organisations. However, what this motion seeks to do is to provide some additional time so that Council uh, can consider a proposal, um, a revised proposal as referred to here in the motion. It also provides Council with an opportunity to develop um, some additional policy options because I think one of the things that has become clear through the discussion and debate is that we do uh, wish to provide consistent messaging to all community sporting organisations who are using Parklands facilities so we don't end up in a situation like we have now uh, where we haven't been able to bottom out a decision in a timely manner. So uh, once again, thank you for the feedback on that. Uh, the second is in relation to Parklands events fees and I think we've heard a number of um, discussions or been party to a number of discussions around that. I won't elaborate on that further. Uh, the third element here is uh, council, which is not up on the screen at the moment, but is council being uh, much clearer in its commitment around a program of works to streets. Um, I think there was some interesting discussion, if I can relay that, Lord Mayor, from the Finance and Governance Committee this afternoon around the order in which streets uh, may uh, be invested in. I can see from what we're putting forward here is that Hindley Street is the primary one. I understand that through the implementation phase there may end up being um, some uh, room for movement. When I said Hindley Street is the primary one, I meant it's the, uh, the first in the list and that there are clearly other streets that are listed as well. Um, I think it will be important as we move through to implementing these projects that we are able to reassess timing, if that permits, so that we can actually go and deliver. And I think this is, in rounding up, this really is about delivery. Uh, one of the reasons we've gone into budget repair is so that we can deliver more for the community, more for residents and more for traders. And the third part of this motion here provides a much clearer articulation around that uh, program of works for streets. So, uh, can I thank Councillor Siebentritt for taking the time to um, distill what was being discussed, I understand, into three elements. Um, and if we could 
just change the number of 19, please? Um, I know that it looks untidy, but this is much easier than trying to cobble together the entire um, amendment in council, so I'm very grateful that he has put some time into this, this matter. I think that we should take each of these um, elements in parts because I think there will be different perspectives on how we might vote on these matters. So um, do I, we have a seconder? Councillor Lee, thank you. Um, so firstly, the, um, does anybody wish to speak against this? Councillor Davis. Uh, absolutely. I knew so. Lord Mayor, I move that the motion be put. Shame. Shame on you. It's a hundred million dollar cut. A hundred million dollar cut. Procedural. Um, I have moved motions and put. Councillor Davis. Hundred million dollars. I'm afraid it's a procedural motion, so we will have to take a vote. All those in favour? Motion. A procedural motion. Yeah, motion that the motion be put. Yeah. That's two, four. All those against? That's been lost. Thank you. So the reason why I was, why Councillor Snape wanted to shut me down is because a hundred million dollars is being cut from what was promised in concept designs for the city of Adelaide. The four streets, we were looking at $140 million cost. Those four streets are now going to be reduced to a budget of $12.5 million. Now, did this take council hours and hours of deliberation? Have we seen the concept designs? Have we made an informed decisions about the bikeways and the bike paths that will be in those proposals? You know what? We found out two hours ago this motion to massively shed and cut $140 million worth of projects down to about $45 million was made in a half-hour meeting not two hours ago. And no one in this council chamber uh, understands. Point of order, that's incorrect information, Lord Mayor. I think actually you're correct, Councillor Snape. It is incorrect information. I don't think any cuts of the sort that have been described have been made tonight. I think the Please, if he could just explain. I'm, I'm happy to re rephrase it. No, no, I, would you like to sit down? Thank you. Can, Mr Sedgman, can you What's explain... What's the point of order? Can you explain to the chamber whether we've had any Where's cuts? Through the presiding member, uh, the motion before you at 21 uh, preserves the allocations in the 23-24 budget as proposed uh, and seeks... Uh, indicative forward estimates uh, in the long-term financial plan uh, over the next three years to fund street upgrades. Uh, that motion is consistent with uh, the resolution of Council in endorsing the business plan and budget for consultation uh, to scope up uh, packages of works in the order of uh, 15 million. Uh, as resolved by Council. Thank you, Mr Sedgman. Um, would you like to carry on? Absolutely, I'd like to carry on. Hutt Street, Hindley Street, O'Connell, Guja, Melbourne Street are significant streets within our city. A lot of them have concept designs that they've gone out to our community for consultation. Hutt Street has been in consultation for years and years and years. Two hours ago, the funding required for those infrastructure projects has now been reduced to $12.5 million, and the concept plans that were prepared I'm cannot sorry, be Councillor. delivered on that budget. Councillor, can you sit Why down? are you trying to silence me? Let me have my I'm speech. Not, I'm asking you to sit down because Why I Why are you so been... afraid of this? I'm not in the least bit afraid of you. Then let me speak um, and finish the two minutes. Councillor, you're behaving in a disorderly manner, and I wish you to be seated so that I can explain to you that something did not happen two hours ago. Those decisions were made several weeks ago. Uh, you may not have been in attendance, but other members were. Where? At a workshop? No, in committees. That we cut all those budgets? It was... We've had discussions on this matter in committees, and you may not agree because you weren't there, but you can't deny that those discussions occurred. I can, I can say that there were concept designs prepared for this city, uh, right? Your attention to section 86 can I continue to speak? I with the presiding member. 
um, you have the opportunity to give a personal explanation. Yeah, it's in the middle of my speech, Lord Mayor. I'm trying to represent my constituents. Councillor Snape tried to shut me down from actually saying this. I know that this doesn't want to be reported in the media, and I know that this council wants to shy away from it, and I think it's evidence that I can't even speak for three minutes to inform my community about the concept designs that went out to them before being shut down twice, three times. This is an important issue, and our community has had the opportunity to provide a consultation on concept designs. And this council is reneging on $140 million worth of concept designs, which is important infrastructure for our community. So I don't support this motion. I should be allowed to speak. I know you don't want me to. I know that's not what you want in the headlines. I understand that. I understand this is a political game, but people have a right to know, and I shouldn't be shut down three times for trying to represent my community. Thank you. I think you are behaving in a disorderly manner, and we're not trying to shut you down. We would just ask that you speak with accuracy and integrity. Um, Councillor Elliott. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I will be supporting this amendment. Um, and I think it's worth noting that despite all the critiques tonight about the lack of information, the lack of meetings, um, consistently missing from our meetings or documents, I find it quite galling because the member who raises those concerns tends to be the most consistent thing missing from those meetings in the first place. Um, I have serious concerns about the, the discussions that have been raised in the first part of this um, amendment discussion, where earlier in the night members were raising um, issues around the, uh, the lack of our ability to, uh, to deliver on projects because the budget was being cut. Um, or the implications of what it would mean for our prudential borrowing limit. Um, and yet we're arguing over small amounts of money that we're charging to businesses to contribute back to the budget so we can actually deliver these projects, but then asking uh, for council to hand over buckets of money, uh, fist over hand, uh, to fund projects that aren't even scheduled for the next couple of years. So I think it is important that we're talking about accuracy with this process, um, Lord Mayor, because it's not a $140 million cut, or it's not a $100 million cut. It's um, a gradual staging of projects and a gradual allocation of major projects over the forthcoming years to make sure we can actually deliver on our, pro on our uh, promises and the expectations of the community. So I think it's entirely fair that we remain accurate in this. And if we're going to draw into question the integrity of members' discussions or in, um, documents presented to us as members, um, then we should make sure that we're actually attending those meetings and reading those documents that are tab tabled to everyone else in the chamber. Thank you, Councillor. Ca uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, Lord Mayor, look, I, I uh, rise to speak um, in favour of the proposed amendment. Um, I, I must say I am just delighted to be part of a council that has finally agreed to launch a Main Street upgrade program. Um, it, it deluded, uh, sorry, it, it deluded, the previous council was deluded in believing it could deliver these, but it never did, and nor did the previous council. Um, we have talked for years and years about upgrades to Hutt Street, O'Connell Street, Melbourne Street, Gooja Street, and yet that's all we did. We talked, we drew uh, plans up, uh, draft plans that went out to consultation. People told us how they loved them, um, but nothing ever happened. And finally, in this council, in the first term of the first year, in the first budget, this council has finally agreed that it will make improvements to the public realm in Hindley Street, in Hutt Street, in O'Connell Street, in Gooja Street, and in Melbourne Street. And those improvements will be aimed at lifting the public realm, making those streets better streets for, for residents to enjoy, and also to improve the amenity of business, to ensure that our businesses are serviced uh, by patrons from all over Adelaide. Um, Lord Mayor, uh, no money was ever allocated for Main Street upgrades. Uh, the first occasion on which we talked about allocating funds was in the May meeting of Council before this budget went out to consultation. And not only did we talk about it, we consulted with the community about the programs to the main streets. This is not a decision of two hours ago. It's a decision that was the culmination of many meetings leading finally to our May consultation discussions and the documents going out to, uh, to the community to comment on. I might just say briefly, uh, in addition to uh, my pleasure at uh, the Main Street upgrades that we're approving here, 
is that I'm delighted that we've been able to come to some resolution of the issues surrounding Parklands fees for the Fringe and the Festival. Um, there were strong representations made to us by the community to not impose fee increases. However, we have been able to uh, introduce fees that were applied in 2020 um, uh, last, uh, which were by all accounts then affordable. At least uh, we had no complaints uh, from the fringe, from gluttony or from the Garden of Unearthly Delights. And so we have, as a concession, reimposed those fees, those 2020 fees in 2024, noting that for three years during the COVID years, there were no fees. The City of Adelaide waived all fees in association with Parklands hires, including for 2023, which was the blockbuster year for the Fringe. And finally, if I can just say, I, I am also delighted that this council, if I can have 30 seconds more, Lord Mayor. Councillor Snape, Councillor Giles, seek leave, all those in favour? That's carried, thank you. I am also delighted that we are, through the amendment uh, proposed by Councillor Stephen Tritt, uh, to look finally at developing a policy framework that would allow us to contemplate how we go about uh, assisting organisations which wish to upgrade facilities to fit for purpose toilets, showers, uh, amenities for people playing sport on the parklands. Um, that in many ways is as important as the main street upgrades because with that policy framework we can deal with applications from organisations like AXARA and others and I remind members that there are some 36 organisations with buildings on the parklands all of whom have varying degrees of concern about the facilities uh, that are provided to them. Um, Lord Mayor, this is a good budget. I'm delighted to endorse it, and I do hope that members will as well. Councillor Snape. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And I just want to echo um, comments made by the Deputy Lord Mayor and, and Councillor Elliott um, before me. But many hours upon hours of, of work have gone in um, to this budget and I've gone into our uh, discussions around Main Streets. Um, I, I, I regret that Councillor Davis missed most of those hours, but um, that, that is life. Um, we, the previous councils have, and not just, not just the last council, but previous councils, plural, have blown up the, the budgets of these, of these Main Streets and as previously mentioned, always promised but never delivered never delivered. Meanwhile, the cost kept rising and rising. Stretching out the projects to almost uh, 2038, and um, noting a, uh, a comment from uh, the Lord Mayor previously, but that would almost be, well, that would be the uh, 200th anniversary of this city. Now that's, that's 15 years away. That's 15 years away, and that's far too long to wait. Our, uh, foot, our footpaths, our main streets are falling to pieces. The work has to be done. This is now, if we pass this mo uh, uh, amendment, we pass this motion, we pass this budget, we become a council of action. Getting things done, uh, Hindley Street next year, two uh, main streets the, the year after, and two after that. Rolling them out, um, getting the work done. So look, I, I certainly, I, I welcome this. I don't see this as um, a, 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 a bad thing. I, I see this as us getting the job done. Uh, and to echo uh, all the comments made around um, parklands and parklands facilities, I actually feel that, uh, not intentionally, but I, I feel that the council more broadly has perhaps st uh, strung along certain organisations because we've not had the policy to deal with building and building infrastructure in our parklands. So we're now correcting that course. We're now doing the right thing, we're providing a policy that will provide certainty for um, 21 West and other parks and other groups so that we can provide what we can in the future. So this is a, this is a, a, a wonderful addition. I'd like to thank the work of Councillor Sebentret as the uh, chair of, of the committee and all the councillors that have been showing up to do the work for many, for many months now and to the administration for all their hard work on this. And uh, I commend this to the chamber as well. Councillor Siebentritt, do you want to sum up? If I can sum up. Um, I just wanted to note and thank council members for the broad debate and discussion, both in, at the Finance and Governance Committee and what we see here. My guess is that uh, residents, ratepayers, businesses 
within the city wouldn't expect anything less. They want us to have frank and fearless discussions and debates with each other. And I think anyone sitting here this evening and tuning in will see that this has been taken with uh, a serious approach, a rigorous approach, as we, unpack, uh, as we unpack complexity. So thank you to all council members for contributing that through to the Finance and Governance Committee. It's been an honour chair through that process. I'd also like to make a note of thanks to the administration in supporting us through what I recognise is a very complex uh, process. So thank you to the administration for supporting us through that. So thank you. Um, I think we should take it in parts. So I think it would be easiest to go 1 to 18, which incorporates the capital extra spend. Oh, have we voted on 10? I'm sorry. So it's 1 to 18, excluding number 10. No, no, I think that Councillor Siebentritt was moving the whole lot, were you not? Did I misunderstand? As amended? Thank I'd, you. We don't need your advice, Councillor. I'd move the addition of the new parts, which were 19 uh, But not onwards. the substantive? No, it had been the addition okay. of 19. Okay, yes. in that case, we'll move, go down to 19 upwards. Um, Thank you. So we'll take 19 to 21 in parts because I realise people may. Is, is that acceptable, Councillor? Um, so, part 19, all those in favour? Against, that's carried, thank you. Part 20, all those in favour? That's carried, thank you, members. And part 21. All those in favour? Against? That's carried. Thank you. That then becomes part of the substantive motion. Could I ask someone to move the substantive motion? Councillor uh, Siebentritt, seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I'll move the whole on block now. All those in favour? I'd like to speak to it. Thank you. Adelaide, you're being played for fools. The message is loud and clear. Adelaide is being touched, shut down for business. Our state government recognises that we're in a very, very fragile state of our economy and they are trying to recover from a devastating global pandemic. They took a step to breathe life into our city only to be undermined by this council. This council will increase parking fees. They will commission eight new parking inspectors who will recover about $2.5 million from visitors. We will escalate fees for the fringe, for gluttony and for our events in our parklands, endangering the success of these vital events. Outdoor dining fees will be reinstated in full force, allowing no time for our travellers to recover from COVID. A bit over an hour ago, we had a special subcommittee to pass what was a serious amendment to previous concept plans Councilor, and I allocation. I before that you're not telling the exact truth in this I matter. understand. So we have previ I in have the I warn you. Could you not speak over me, please? It's disorderly. I'm just reminding you that I've told you before that that was not true. I understand. I understand your view on that. I also understand that to deliver the full concept plans, which were set out uh, and reported in the media, well, the cost was $140 million. My understanding now to deliver those to the street works is now $45 million. That's a true comment. Our community has been working on these projects for many, many years, and I know that local traders, relying on the concept plans consulted with them, have put in significant investments to revitalise our, our streets, and I believe that they have been led up a garden path. Moreover, when it comes to sporting infrastructure, this council's true intent is crystal clear. They are willing to abandon tens of thousands of parkland users who rely on proper facilities to support their physical health and their mental well-being. It also develops a sense of belonging. Despite years of promises, I feel that this council is washing its hands of the Park 21 West project, and I suggest every other sporting club in the city as well. This council, I feel, is more committed to making itself look good with glorious speeches about how we're delivering on all these projects. But what we're delivering is a half-baked uh, vision of the concept design yet to be determined. I say to the people of Adelaide, don't be fooled by this high taxing budget with a 10% rate increase for local residents. It strangles our local businesses trying to recover from COVID and it retreats from community expectations regarding infrastructure and leaves our community in the lurch. 
I don't support this budget, and I think we need to do a lot better for the people of Adelaide. Thank you. Um, I will now go back to putting this matter to the vote. Um, all those in favour? All those against? Thank you. That's carried. Um, the division has been called. Members, the division has been called. Please stand in favour of, of the motion until your name has been called. Councillor Noon, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Ho, Councillor Lee, Councillor Siebentrip, Councillor Giles, Councillor Snape, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Martin and Councillor Abraham Zadeh. Thank you. And can I congratulate members on the passage of the budget for the next year. Um, I will briefly mention in my Lord Mayor's report um, that we hosted a session on the voice to Parliament um, with the support of Council for the Yes vote case Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay. I'll do this anyway, and then we can get over with this. Um, we were fortunate in getting neighbouring mayors and councillors and the uh, representatives, Dale Aegis, Sally Scales and Clinton Wanganeed, who spoke passionately about this matter. Um, in addition, I met the police minister, Joe Sokax, and uh, the new officer in charge, Superintendent Scott Denny, and conducted a walking tour through the West End of the city in the evening um, and looked at hot spots and areas of concern. Uh, many of us attended a Capital City Committee and we had a Catatilla board meeting. Um, our citizenship ceremony was held last week for 25 new citizens from 16 different countries. I know there are many sports enthusiasts in this room and can I recommend a documentary about Hakim El Araibi um, who um, had a premiere at Piccadilly Cinema called The Defenders. It was about a young soccer player who was arrested in um, Thailand and was under threat of being deported um, back to his homeland. So I recommend that soccer-based film, and you'll be surprised that I enjoyed it enormously. Um, so could I ask someone to note my report? Moved by Councillor Davis, seconded by Councillor Snape. All those in favour? And I apologise... I missed out item 10.2 in the excitement. Um, Lord Mayor, I wish to make a report to Council. Is that, do I do it now or after 10.2? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm very disorderly. Can, I, <laughs> can we deal with this and then we'll go back yes, to sure. the proper agenda? Thank you. Um, can I ask if someone would move noting the mandatory rebates? Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Lee. All those in favour? That's carried. I apologise for my excitement at finishing that last item. Um, 12... Point one, um, reports from council members. Yep. Councillor yep. Giles. Okay. Thank you. Um, I wish to um, report on the um, attendance that I attended um, the 2023 um, National General Assembly of the Australian Local Government Association and also the Australian Council for Local Government, that, which was newly established after 10 years um, in absence by the new federal government, which was a, a um, day where federal ministers and, rep and uh, councils from all over the country could sit and discuss key issues of common concern. There were about 1,100 uh, councillors and mayors in the room. Um, at this um, at this uh, at this forum, and uh, about 600 on the on the final day, um, there were huge amounts of issues being talked about of interest to local government. Um, but the key takeouts um, was that it was a fantastic opportunity for us to be very clear about what other councils are doing around the around the country. Um, in relation to the key issues that we all share, which was climate change, housing, um, and um, those two in particular, and also the way that those two things connect. There was a large proportion talk, uh, of people talking about the impact of disasters in some parts of the country, which was nicely juxtapositioned ne next to a, a session about climate change and the need for local, local government, who are the ones that end up managing and supporting their communities at times of, of, um, of horrific cli um, climate um, emergencies have to actually um, have the facilities and the support to be able to do that, but, it, but, it, but we also need to address the prevention by having climate change addressed at the local level. Um, 
the federal government's agenda was really clear, it was connected and focused, and so they're putting the things together and are making, sending a very clear message to us. Um, we've got some really great innovation, and I think we should be able to share, though, get, 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 in, um, get discussions going between councils in our own state, even, and share ideas and strategies across the country arising from the information that came out in that conference. The government's focus is on addressing inequality, housing, social services and building communities and the funding will follow those priorities and we need to get ahead of those sort of priorities. There was a lot of discussion about the Uluru Statement in the, of the Heart and the importance um, of having a voice to parliament, the First Nations people and that was backed up by a number of councils who um, come from remote areas of, the, of um, Australia like the East Arnhem. Um, council uh, who spoke in language to this, um, in their own language to this point. Electrification was a massive issue and we had a, we're lucky to have a, a speaker, Saul Griffiths, and I put a link in my report so you can have a look of, of a number of resources from him. I reckon we should get him to council and, and listen to what he has to say and he talks about electrification. I think we should, oh sorry. One of the big takeouts was that we need to get ahead around the question of electrification because um, it's quite clearly documented now that that's the fastest way that we as a nation, a state and uh, locally to, um, uh, to uh, reduce our carbon emissions. And finally, there were some issues around, there's some information about how we better engage and connect with our community, especially young people that I think we can really f uh, learn from. And, but the key takeout for me from that conference was that because we had so much contact and connection with the federal government ministers, there is a lot of funding opportunities coming up and available and we need to be funding and investment ready. Um, the, the quote from the Prime Minister was that they will be willing to fund projects that are well thought through um, and are ready for investment and we need to get our head around what those opportunities are as a council um, and make sure that we tap into the uh, opportunities particularly for infrastructure funding from the federal government in the areas of active transport, community infrastructure and climate change. I've um, written a report for council members and distributed it this afternoon and I also table it today and hope that, uh, so that it can be included in the minutes. Thank you. Council members reporting on their um, attendance at events. It, it's very elegantly written. I recommend it to you. Councillor Noon. Um, that's a hard act to follow, but I just want to say that I attended the citizen ceremony along with uh, Councillor Snape and Deputy Lord Mayor and, and these amazing, happy, it was a joyful occasion. It was just, it reminded me what a fantastic uh, and how lucky we are to live in this country and testament to that is that we can all sit around here and debate issues without actually you know, harming each other or having major ramifications. So, um, yeah, so thank you for that invite. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Davis. I had the pleasure of going to the awards ceremony for the um, Blue Brigade, which was actually held in Clemsig, so it was outside of our council area, but they did play a number of matches in Victoria Park and that was um, supported by council. Um, I don't really like spiced food that much, but they did provide dinner and it was absolutely amazing. So I was very pleased to attend that particular event. Uh, and also the City to Bay um, launch was held today. So I think you've got about 85 days to, to practice. I know Your Worship is an extremely fast walker. Um, and uh, there's a $5,000 prize available, councillors. This is, uh, could go a long way for, a particular, for any infrastructure projects. Um, if you run the, um, the entire 21 and then you go back and you start again, you run both events, there's a long one and a short one, then if you win both you get $5,000. So I was very pleased to attend that today. Thank you. Councillor Snape. Sorry, just, I'll be very quick. Um, I just want to note that on uh, Friday, um, you yourself, Lord Mayor, and um, Councillor Janet Giles, uh, David Elliott, Carmel Noon and myself attended the launch of uh, Wari Imperilla, the, the, uh, the new Mellow Street Community Centre. 
uh, which is run by Housing Choice SA and is really a, a really good example of grassroots um, uh, community in action. And it was very well attended um, and Lucy Hood was there as well. And I certainly wish them all the best for the future and I look forward to uh, not only seeing them um, continue, but I look forward to seeing them thrive as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Abraham Zadeh. Uh, Lord Mayor, um, can I put a request uh, to administration through you? Um, I noticed that um, uh, I've been away from a number of uh, uh, committees and I uh, was wondering whether if it's possible um, for administration when it comes to um, putting this report together to highlight which of those committees um, took place um, uh, before 5 or 5.30 p.m. Um, I, as I said, Lord Mayor, I just can't help but to look at the number of apologies uh, that are on this table, uh, and I think uh, there were quite a few of those committees that took place uh, before 5 p.m. Um, I think that's very reasonable because it's very difficult for people with careers and jobs to attend thank council you. meetings. So thank you. We, we should be able to do that. Um, thank you. So can I ask someone to move the noting of those? Councillor Nude, seconded by Councillor Elliott. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, members. Um, Councillor Abraham today, you had a question on notice. I did, Lord Mayor, um, and I've got a quick follow-up, if, if I may. I was wondering whether if um, administration have had uh, any uh, further discussions since the time that the um, agenda has been published with state government in relation to the Planning and Development Fund? I'm not sure that I can take that question or we have an answer. Um, we'll take it as a, an additional question and just unconventionally ask for a response. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Thank you through the uh, chair. Um, from the time of publication, we have continued to follow up with the state government and have been advised that um, the question is with the uh, minister, uh, the office uh, for the minister, and they're progressing a response, and we will provide that to council as soon as it's received. Thank you. So um, we will be in receipt of that um, question on notice. Um, the questions without notice, Councillor Snape. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, so I've got a question uh, through you to administration. Noting the recent incident involving pedestrians on Angus Street last week, can administration provide an update on the progress of um, two reviews, the citywide speed limit review and the school safety review? Thank you. Um, Mr McCready, I think this is yours. Through you, Lord Mayor. In response, the following activities are in progress. Works have begun on the development of the integrated transport strategy, which will provide high-level strategic direction for transport across the City of Adelaide. Separate to the strategy, the traf uh, traffic and transport team is progressing with a priority citywide uh, speed limit and school safety zone review. The project brief for the body of work is currently being finalised and we will be going out to start to commence that work the first quarter of this financial year. Outcomes of the citywide speed limit and school zone safety review are anticipated to be presented to Council on or before December 2023. In addition, Council officers met with the leadership representatives from St Aloysius on Friday the 23rd of June to discuss the incident and to assess what measures can be undertaken to enhance safety. A request was made to consider a change to parking bays. The traffic and transport team have commenced consultation this week. Currently awaiting the outcome of the SAPOL investigation to assess, uh, assess areas of improvement in line with the Department of Infrastructure and Transport's guidelines. And then lastly, the parking information officers will continue to be vigilant in the precinct and we're meeting on a regular basis with the school. Thank you. Um, I think there are no question, um, motions on notice, but I think Councillor Abraham today has a Thank you, Thank you Councillor. Councillor Elliot. I just had a follow-up question for Mr McCready, if I may. Um, I'm sorry, I, a, I missed that's seeing right. you. I was just wondering if we could get a written um, list or breakdown of those activities distributed to council members to convey to our constituents. Yes, the answer is thank you. Councillor Abraham Zadeh. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I did have a motion without notice that I... Uh, sent through to um, the governance team, yourself and the CEO. So apologies, members, I didn't get a chance to distribute this as I was finalising the words as the meeting got underway. Um, 
uh, but it's... Uh, Where is it? Councillor, I'm sorry. We seem to have lost it in the system. I will forward that again. Uh, I've got it here with me and it does say council um, recommendations. I don't actually have a, have a device with me, so... It's... I was told you had a motion without notice, but I didn't actually see it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Have you oh, no, sent that's it? fine. That's okay. Have you got it printed, up, Councillor? No. Okay. I think we're in um, a Wi-Fi dead space here. Can administration provide an update to the elected body at the next appropriate committee meeting on any discussions with stakeholders such as state government agencies, industry bodies, etc., and potential solutions to tackling the increasing antisocial behaviour taking place in the Adelaide CBD? Thank you. And a I'll, seconder? I'll just allow members to read that. And, and a seconder, Councillor Davis. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davis. I'll just um, give members a, uh, a minute to have a read of that. I think this is a motion, not a question. So could we have it as a motion without notice? 16, item 16. Item 16, motion without notice. Sorry? Sixteen. God help us. Sorry, um, and that's been seconded. Would you like to speak to it? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Yes, um, Lord Mayor. Given the um, uh, recent headlines and uh, uh, media articles around some of the antisocial behaviour happening in the city, particularly the precinct that I'm uh, uh, in touch with, being around North Terrace and northern part of the uh, CBD. Um, uh, I essentially wanted to uh, uh, get an update from uh, our staff. I know that they are talking to other government agencies, but I think it's important for the elected body to be across some of those discussions, um, because I have no doubt that as a result of some of those discussions, uh, um, there will likely be a, a, a solution uh, and a, a potential um, council resolution. So. Uh, 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 I hope to get, an, uh, to get uh, an update at the next um, appropriate committee. I don't know whether if that would be the, um, the City Culture Committee or the um, Development and Business Affairs. Uh, I'll, I'll um, maybe ask the CEO to clarify that if we can, please. Um, thank you. We, we have met with um, the Minister of Police, the um, Police Commissioner. Um, we've spoken about it to the Premier. We've had discussions with the Minister for Tourism. So there have been lots of discussions. And um, the committee that meets the working group has had this item on the agenda. And I know that sounds bureaucratic, but that's the way problems are solved very often. Um, and I'm, I'm optimistic that having had 
additional police provided to the city, there may be some other solutions. So we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Councillor Noon. Is there, out of those discussions, has, has there been any recommendations on what we can do, like increase lighting, uh, increase security? I mean, um, interestingly enough, the lighting seems to be a matter of contention. Um, the police, um, various police officers, have suggested that our lights don't come on often enough or early enough. And we have struggled to work out what it is about our lighting system. I, I think it may be that we're at the equinox and it may be that we have a fixed time through the year and we might have just hit a period where we're maybe 20 minutes too late. And there seems to be a technical reason which I can't quite understand, whereby making lights in particular streets come on at a different time is technically difficult. Mr McCready, can you explain this? Through, I don't understand the technology. Through you, Lord Mayor, the, the majority of our lighting system are on PE cells, so they're, they're darkness activated. So depending, for instance, if during the daytime that turns dark, technically speaking, the lights will come on. Um, so we wish to understand. So Bank Street seems to be one of the streets that's suggested. So the team are down there doing an audit just to check that everything is as it should be. But noting also lighting uh, with PE cells, if you have a lighting feature which is quite significant in, in close proximity, it may impact in regards to the lights. So we're just having a look at that to see what actually occurs. So, but I can say that most of the lights that we have within the city of Adelaide are on PE cells activated by darkness not timed. Thank you. Um, so unless there is any view against this, Councillor Davis. Yes, thank you. I, I just wanted to actually had a motion drafted, which wasn't as good as Councillor Abraham's today's, um, to put as a motion without notice tonight. Um, but I did want to mention that in particular Bank Street um, has been uh, raised with me uh, in, as a particular concern. Um, I'm also glad that um, with you and uh, other state bodies uh, we're looking to address these concerns. I think it's something we need to be publicly, um, you know, indicating to our communities that we're on top of uh, to ensure that people feel safe within our city. So I thank very much for the um, Councillor Abri who's there for the motion. Cheers. Thank you. So, oh, Councillor Giles, you wish to speak? I was just, um, I was just going to um, ask whether or not um, this could be um, reported back to us at the SAPOL briefing we're going to have next week. That That's might be a good idea. A more t a timely way of dealing yes. with it. Um, I, I think that's a good idea. Um, thank you. Through through the chair, the intent was um, for the council through that quarterly briefing to meet the new superintendent in charge of the city, Mr. Scott Denny. So he'll be there, um, and he'll give you uh, an update. And then, of course, there's the community services and culture committee following that. Um, where administration will be able to provide you a more detailed update on uh, where the work is at that we're doing. Thank you. So all those in favour? All those against? That's carried unanimously. Thank you, members. Um, if there are no other motions without notice, I'm going to move 617, which is the exclusion clause, um, to exclude the public. Moved by Councillor Abraham today, seconded by Councillor Davis. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, members. Um, that's for 18.1. Um, could I move then the order to exclude for item 19.1, item Councillor Abraham Zadeh, Councillor seconded by Councillor Siebentritt. Thank you. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, members.